FM review. Today is the day, guys. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're here to talk about the brand new weekend album, Dawn FM. So this is actually the brand new fifth studio album from this uh the Canadian R&B pop singer you know him the weekend and he just released this full length album Don FM so without little announcement on the first day of uh the new year he announced that he would be dropping something on January 7th called Don FM and uh we all knew it was a new album by by the looks of it and by the teasers it looks like this new era and it's uh, it's a new dawn um it's a second part in this new trilogy that he announced and um it's after after hours i, I don't know why I, I said after after but yeah that's pretty much what it is and um this album has a full like 80s pop um takeover where all of the songs pretty much feel the same and have that same kind of tone but they're all different with a twist in each track so that's what i really like about this album but anyway, um, I was pretty excited. I was very ready for this album to drop. And now that it's finally out, it's been a few weeks and uh, I did get COVID, which sucks. But um, I'm finally here to review it. This album is really, really good. It's fantastic. It's a, it's a bunch of 80s pop fun. And um, yeah, so here's my review. So as I said that this album has this um consistent 80s pop style it's a full pop record from abel and i really like this tone and this switch up and honestly some of these songs are perfect representations of what he can do with max martin and like swedish house mafia all these guys and put in an ace pop aesthetic so uh, that's probably why i really like this album a ton and um yeah so here's my uh, track by track so the first track we got dawn fm and um it's just an opening track with some really cool synths and we got my boy jim carrey hopping on the track and uh, he is the narrator for the radio station that is don fm and he says his like monologue thing and then we get right into the first track gasoline now i know a lot of people don't like this song for me i really dig it i think it's a lot of fun uh well not a ton of fun but like it's a lot of dark fun i guess like the synths and the beating drums and the the tenacious vocals all mixed together pretty well i mean the mixing on this record is actually really great and um i think this song has some of the better like uses of um this new kind of tone that abel is developing he has this new vocal that he uses that's really low it's pitched down a lot um a lot of fans might not like this but um for me i actually kind of like it i think it's kind of cool and um i don't think it's that bad i think it's not awful and then we get right into it actually transitions like a lot of these songs transition into each other which is sick but this one goes into how do i make you love me it's just pretty chill and like pretty pretty lo-fi kind of ballad and i really like it and um i think it's like pretty pretty cool it's got some nice synths some great drums the production of the the synths and the 80s beats and all that is just great on this record and it goes right into the extended version of take my breath and um i like this extended version a lot i think it has these like great grooves to it so that's what i like how he starts it on that and then also the bridge is longer and all that so i think that's actually pretty cool and it's a it's a good like extend ex extension of this great track so leading right into the next track after take my breath we have sacrifice which is my personal favorite track on the record or it's one of them at least it is a really sick and awesome and gritty edm slash 80s pop track and it's got this super super cool guitar backing track like a brown and it's really cool and um also it's got these like killer drums and it's got a great hook from abel and it's just an amazing song guys like honestly this song is so cool and amazing and if you saw the fantano reaction to it he he goes crazy like yeah he is like loving it 
But then we get right into a tale by Quincy, which is, uh, you know, Quincy Jones. He's a famous musician talking about his life. It's actually pretty depressing if you really think about it. But it leads right into Out of Time, which I think is a very, very good song on the album. Very kind of underrated. And it's got these really smooth and silky, like, piano, synth, drums, all this. And it has a great um, vocal take and everything. And it, it's really, really good. And... It leads into uh, this another Jim Carrey appearance. Yeah, he's back again. And he's like saying that um, they're going to do some easy listening. So we get Here We Go Again with Tyler, the creator. Yes, it's a very weird collab, I know. But um, it works. Like I like the song. There's no beat. But it, the production was done great by Tyler. But, um, you know, it's like pretty, pretty slow, pretty mellow with this mellow pad, piano, synth, whatever. And um, Tyler's bars here, very good. I like it. Talking about the prenups and all this stuff with a weird relationship. And, you know, Abel, Abel's great on this track also. Like, I really like this song. And, yeah, it's really good. Um, then we get right into this, like, bassy synth uh, intro to Best Friends, which I think it's a weird track. But, you know, I kind of like it. So we get, like, uh, a friend zone song in a way. Like, I guess I think that's what it is, but um yeah these um these boom but the 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 synth is really cool and um I mean the drum track is pretty cool and you know all that so um yeah good song overall yeah so then we get uh this new like transition and it slows down it goes like dun 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 and then we get into is there someone else which I think is one of the best songs on the album. Yes, it is super cool. It's got this Vox sample that I really like. I think it fits along with the tone of the track very well. The the lyrics and all that from Abel are great, and the delivery is amazing. And the beat is slow, mellow, but works in the in the grand scheme of the track. So that's really cool. Um, then it goes right, and it slows down, goes into Starry Eyes, which I think is another great song but it has this like sense of begging or emotional resignation saying let me love, let me you. love you and uh let get me to like, the like, 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 going out uh let me be there like I'll all, be this, there. all this emotional stuff it leads into another kind of interlude called every angel's terrifying this thing is weird like i don't like it it's super interesting because it's got these like synth and this poetry and then it goes into this fast-paced product movie thing i think called afterlife now i called the number that they say it's um four 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 i think yeah and uh nothing happens so don't try it but um i don't get it like it's not my personal favorite um i don't get it or like it so yeah then we get uh, Don't Break My Heart. I think this one's kind of weird in moments, but overall, I think it's pretty cool. Um, it's got some really chill bars and chill synth layers and got this nice uh, pad in the background and the beat is pretty nice. And then we get <sighs> the weirdest track has the worst feature on the album and one track that I don't think you guys would like see me putting this low, but um. I Heard You're Married is the worst song on the album, and this is why. Now, the messaging is literally just about cheating, and that's about it, and it's kind of weird, but um, the other thing is Lil Wayne is on this 80s disco beat, and you would you would just say that, me saying that. That doesn't make sense. Like, why is Wayne on a track like this? Then you listen to it, and it's actual trash, and honestly, Abel's great. Like, his parts are amazing. But Wayne, the Dirty Harry line, the hubcap line, like, what? what is this man thinking when he's writing tracks? Like, is he thinking, let me make it funny? Like, Bird's Canary? I don't get this song. His verse is the worst I've heard all year. And I listened to the Corday album. That was something. I'll tell you that. Review coming out soon, probably. I don't, I don't know. I, I might review it. Maybe, I don't really know. But this song is groovy, and then Wayne ruins it, so it is probably the worst track on the album, I would say. It's the weakest one, at least.
So following that, we got one more song, and it's called Less Than Zero, and it is literally uh, modern English, um, I Melt With You. Like, listen to it. It's the same key, it's in C major, it's got the same chord percussions, got this, like, guitar under the drums and all this. But this song is beautiful, and it's the best song on the album, I would say. It is near perfection, I would call it, but this song manages to put in a somber note to end off the album with some great vocal just uh, great vocals great production amazing lyrics just everything about it is amazing and i think this is the best song on the album it's a it's a great way to close and then we get phantom regret by jim it's jim carrey reading some poetry ending it off on a weird and somber but also happy note and um i really liked this ending so um yeah, so my final thoughts here, I just think this album is magnificent. I think it's beautiful. I think it's dark, but not too dark. I think it's a step up from After Hours, and I think every song, except for like maybe one or two, are bangers and just amazing. I love this song so much, and I love this album, and it's the best and perfect way to kick off the new year, except for me getting COVID, which sucked. Yeah, so I'm feeling a 9 out of 10. Like, yeah, I, I guess you guys pretty much expected a high score for this one. But, yeah, 9. I'm feeling a 9. Goodbye.